the most important diseases that affect mankind have basically been treated the same way for decades, and we see very little advance in that. Here, the agents were really great at speeding up the hypothesis generation. By the end of this now, we actually have some potentially really promising candidates for novel treatment. And so we think about this as just the beginning of AI-generated discoveries to come. Hi, my name is Michaela. Um, for the past year, I've been leading the science team at Future House. And before that, I spent the previous decade uncovering the fundamental principles of how genes turn on in human cells. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm a clinician scientist. and I'm working on building a drug discovery pipeline at Future House. Before this, I was uh, doing my PhD in biotech. Um, and then I started a company working on uh, new biomaterials for therapeutics. I'm Benjamin. I just joined Future House, and I'm actually doing my PhD right now at Oxford in statistical machine learning. And before this, I worked in computational synthetic biology. So today we're sitting here in our lab at Future House, and we're here to tell you about progress towards a novel discovery for a therapeutic to treat dry age-related macular degeneration. That we generated using the Future House platform. So to generate novel therapeutic candidates for dry AMD, we created a pipeline connecting three Future House agents, Pro and Falcon, our literature review agents, as well as Finch, our prototype data analysis agent. This multi-agent system is the first of its kind to integrate hypothesis generation with data analysis, creating an end-to-end -end therapy discovery system. Today we're talking a lot about dry AMD, but that's because we just had to pick somewhere to start and, and commit to doing experiments in one particular realm. But one thing I want to emphasize is the fact that the system is general purpose and could be used to generate hypotheses to treat any human disease. So let's dive into how the system actually works. First, it selected a therapeutic strategy for treating dry MD by conducting a wide literature review, synthesizing over 150 papers, and it proposed a variety of experimental strategies to treat dry MD, and decided to pursue the strategy of enhancing RP cell phagocytosis because it had a fast iteration time as well as presented a creative approach to treating AMD. After synthesizing over 400 scientific papers and clinical trial reports, the system then generated hypotheses for therapeutic candidates to enhance RP phagocytosis. We tried 10 of the initial drugs that were suggested by the agent in this experiment. One of the strategies that the agent suggested to treat dry AMD was to enhance RPE cell phagocytosis. And it suggested that we model this behavior in a cell culture assay in the lab using ARPE19 cells, which is a RPE cell line, and flow cytometry. And we opted to do this because it's a pretty easy assay and it's pretty scalable. These agents perform almost every step of this therapeutic discovery workflow. The humans were only involved in choosing, you know, from, from the assays proposed by our agent system um, and executing the experiments. We still need humans to actually do the physical experiments in the lab. From these experiments, our data analysis agent was able to design and run an entire bioinformatics workflow, revealing that a rock inhibitor, Y27632, had the highest performance in enhancing RP phagocytosis. These insights are used in the next round of therapeutic candidate generation, creating this iterative drug development workflow that improves drug candidates through experimental data. When we ran Robin a second time, giving it the results from our experiments, it actually proposed another rock inhibitor. Rock inhibitors were already known to want to phagocytosis, but no one had thought to put it forward as a treatment for a dry AMD. And so it's really interesting that it's one of those low-hanging fruit where the science already existed years beforehand, but no one had thought of all the facts together in this way. The agent also suggested that we do RNA-seq to better understand why Y27632 was enhancing phagocytosis. We did this experiment and we fed the data to Finch, which found that not only is the ROC inhibitor causing differential expression of actin cytoskeleton genes, but it's also altering expression of autophagy genes. It was previously known that ROC inhibitors were able to enhance phagocytosis through post-translational modifications of the myosin light chain, but the secondary effect, its differential regulation of the autophagy genes points to a potentially new mechanism of how rock inhibitors are working. If we were to just continue this cycle of doing experiments the agent suggests, feeding them to Finch, our data analysis agent, and generating further hypotheses follow on from that, we might get to new mechanistic hypotheses of how to treat diseases. Many of the most important diseases that affect mankind is really complicated. Lots of genes and environmental factors that are involved in like coming together to create this disease. When something is that complicated, it's hard for the human mind to like fully comprehend it. But LLMs, which in theory have the entire knowledge of the publicly available biomedical literature, should be able to 
like generate new novel ideas that humans can't think of. We develop agents that use LLMs to identify new opportunities for therapeutics for dry market regulation. One thing I want to emphasize is the fact that all that someone needs to do to run the system is to input a disease. And so while we focus today on dry AMD, the system is general purpose and could be used to generate hypotheses to treat any human disease. When you're running this model, it takes a little bit less than an hour for it to do the entire hypothesis generation. And I get a little bit impatient sometimes when this model is running. But if you think about it, to read hundreds of scientific literature and to go through clinical trial reports, it would take a human days, if not weeks, to go through this. So it's really impressive that I can do this in such a quick amount of time. I think this shows that uh, scientific discovery is kind of a natural domain for artificial intelligence because LLMs can synthesize insights across scientific literature and data at a superhuman level in create insights that humans can't even think about. And I think it's exciting that this is really just the beginning. So this is a really exciting milestone in the development of AI agents that can make scientific discoveries. And we hope this is the first of many, many more to come to realize the power of using AI agents to make advances for human health.